Writing is enjoyable when we truly get to know our characters. Knowing a character well can also make writing slightly easier. You might know the characters so well that they start to take over the story. Here are some tips to help develop your own interesting characters. Tip 1. What is your character's name? Sometimes names can reflect your character's personality. Think Miss Honey from Matilda. Or Mrs. Trunchbull. Professor Snape. I'm not sure I can trust that name. Chegwin Toffle is a quirky daydreamer. Fern Shepherd is brilliant with animals. A well-chosen name can teach us a lot about your character. Tip 2. How old is your character? A character's age can make them relatable to your target audience. What life experiences has your character had? What stage of life is your character at? Your character's age is important to remember. Tip 3. Appearance. What does your character look like? Appearance is often the first thing we like to describe. Tell the reader about your character's hairstyle. What about their eye colour? Does your character have any distinguishable features? And what clothes does your character wear? Does your character's fashion match their personality? Tip 4. What does your character want? This is the most important thing to consider. Your character's mission will determine the entire plot. Does your character want to win a running race? Maybe your character wants to help a friend. Perhaps your character needs to defeat an evil villain. Whatever you choose, remember to keep pushing your character towards their goal. Tip 5. Habits. Does your character tie up her hair when she's stressed? Perhaps he rides his bike the same way to school every morning. Habits, big and small, can teach us a lot about your character. Tip 6. What are your character's strengths? Is your character a great problem solver? Perhaps your character is a fast runner. Maybe your character is extremely loyal. Your character could even have superpowers. Tip 7. What are your character's weaknesses? Giving your character weaknesses can help set up problems along the way. Perhaps your character is scared of the dark. Maybe your character is forgetful. Dory, anyone? We all have weaknesses, so think about this when you're planning your characters. We decided to do an experiment and plan a character together. As a group, we discussed our character's traits. This is what we came up with. Name, Hazel Lohylis. Age, Hazel is in her early teens. Appearance, Hazel has wavy brown hair and hazel eyes. She wears simple and stylish pastel colored clothes. Wants. Hazel wants to be noticed by Damien. Ooh. Well, I suppose she is in her early teens. Habits. Hazel ties up her hair when she's stressed. She also likes to play the violin. Strengths. She is a diligent student and usually achieves straight A's. Weaknesses. Sometimes Hazel makes strange decisions to impress Damien. With our Hazel character profile set, we each wrote a short story about her. Our stories are vastly different, but each one captures Hazel in her own unique way. We hope you enjoy our stories. Why? What? How? 249 words. Hazel Lohylis straightened her blazer neatly as she made sure no piece of fabric was out of place. She tilted her head slightly forward, making sure her parting was correct. Neat and tidy, just as she liked it. When Hazel arrived at school, she saw her. If it wasn't Jody Hansen in the flesh, Hazel's chestnut eyes widened at the scene. But Damien, can you please come with me? Jody whined. Hazel flinched at the complaint as she felt deep torment rising within her. She heard Damien grunt at Jodie's attempt to go out with him as she passed the bustling school hallway. Why can't she just leave him alone? Why can't she just understand that she's not a good fit for him? I need to help Damien and Jodie. All she needs is a little reminder, an awakening, a slight push in the right direction. As soon as Jodie walked away into one of the classrooms, Hazel knew that this was her chance, her only chance. Hey Damien, some of my friends are going to the movies tomorrow and we have an extra ticket and I was thinking you could attend. Don't worry about not knowing anyone. 
I'll stay with you, she said, trying to hint at them hanging out. Thanks for the invite, but I'm busy that night. I'm sure Jody can make it, Damien said gleefully. Seriously, Jody, how could this day get any worse? Well, this is gonna be fun. Butterflies, 247 words. Hazy and Damien sitting in a tree. K-I-S-S-I-N-G. First comes love, cut it out, you two. Hazel hollered, tying up her waist length brown locks. Uh-oh, Jackson muttered. She's tying up her hair. We better run, Baxson. Hazel straightened the pastel pink sweater she'd received from her parents for getting an A plus on her last music exam. The buckle on her white block heels was tucked back neatly, and her checkered mini skirt was without any crinkle. Hazel had made sure to iron it so that it looked smart and elegant. Damien, Damien, Damien. How many times had she been waiting for an excuse to say his name? Now that they were working on a biology project together, there was no avoiding the interactions. She quickly recited her notes. Butterfly wings are built, requiring the breakdown and synthesis of protein and biomolecules. The worst thing she wanted to do was to fail in front of Damien. Hazel peered at her alphabetically organized binders and picked out the ones she needed. Everything had to be perfect for when Damien arrived. Hazel also hid her report card with a B in case Damien spotted it. She couldn't risk him finding about her imperfections. An epiphany then hit her. Why was she stressing out so much? Wouldn't Damien like her so much more if she was just herself? She won't need to change for someone else. After all, if nothing changed, there would be no such things as butterflies. For Damien, 296 words. Hazel's auburn locks bounced against her shoulders as she sifted through the fishnets and chains in Serpa. The black attire was unfamiliar to Hazel, but if she was going to imitate Kylie's gothic style, she was going to do it right. Her chestnut eyes gazed over the selection again. It needs to be perfect, Hazel muttered to herself. She inhaled deeply. Her style is perfect. This is miserable. Hazel pulled her iPhone from her purse, scrolling through Kylie's Instagram. No wonder Damien is head over heels for her. The gothic style accentuated Kylie's perfect figure. A plaid skirt hugged her small frame. Hazel continued to idolize her style until she stumbled upon one photo. The photo. The photo of Kylie in Damien's embrace. Hazel shook herself out of her petrified state, regaining some composition before heading to the checkout. She tugged her well-kept hair into a messy bun, as she did when she was stressed, revealing the small gold chain she received as a child. She approached the grunge, blonde cashier cautiously. Her blue eyes caught Hazel's abruptly. She never got along with people with this style, with blue eyes, with blonde hair, with boyfriends named Damien. That'll be $18.99, the cashier exclaimed. Thank you, Hazel muttered to the cashier, reaching for her card. Her wallet was neat and tidy, never a dollar bill out of place. I love your style, by the way. If only I could dress like that. Hazel froze, scratching her ear to make sure she computed that correctly. She admired her style. Damien admired Kylie's style. He was enchanted by the lengthy chains and studded belts. What if he could be enchanted by my style too? The thought passed through Hazel's head. Is it the style he's consumed by? The concert, 378 words. It was the time Hazel had been waiting for all week. A contagious grin spread across her face as she read the score on her chemistry paper. Another straight A. At the back of the class, perfect Princess Rachel stared at her test in utter confusion, as if there had been a mistake. Jealousy boiled inside of her as she peered at Hazel's paper before sinking back into her chair. When the class was finally dismissed, Hazel's ecstatic spirit was replaced with Rory. 
She darted out of the building like a bullet, past an overflowing rubbish bin and into the Performing Arts Building. She had never felt so stressed. What if I don't get in? What if I do get in? Hazel paced the hallway, violin case dangling by her side. She yanked on her pastel clothes, unsure of what to do. Hazel Lohilis, the performing arts teacher, beckoned for her to go in. Hazel took a deep breath, tied up her wavy brown hair and entered the room. Hazel anxiously approached the notice board. She tried to contain herself, but couldn't resist the temptation to smile. Rachel watched as Hazel's face lit up with excitement and glared at her as though she was staring into her soul. Rachel would have done anything to get the lead part. Wow, great job, Hazel. I can't wait to see you perform, Damien told her, not even noticing Rachel lurking in the corridor. Hazel blushed, turning pink with pride. Hazel was brimming with nervousness. It was as though the whole world depended on this one concert. She gently placed her violin case on the wooden ground. Little did she know its contents were empty, courtesy of Rachel, and started to do her makeup. Time was running out and Hazel was sick to her stomach. She ran into the bathroom like a strike of lightning, yanked open the cubicle door, and then she froze to the spot. There, in the murky basin, lay her beloved Yamaha violin. It had been sunken, just like Hazel's heart. Time was ticking, and she began to frantically search for a spare violin. With one minute left, she grabbed an abandoned violin and rushed onto the stage, just in time.